Hello one and all and welcome to episode 11 of the Contest Realm podcast. As you all know, you're finding us on either YouTube, in a special playlist, SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes. Obviously, this is episode 11, so we're now on to uh, we're now going up on our way to number 20. If you're watching on YouTube, I've given in to a lot of requests and I'll be putting time codes. Yes, there'll be time codes in the pinned comment for you to all enjoy. And this is going to be a very special episode because we're going to be going over the key fundamentals with the game economy. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my glamorous co-host, Incursion's buddy. And according to Mike Star on Twitch, we have the type of chemistry that my fiance Emily should be jealous of. And you can find... <laughs> That, that's that's true. I was in uh, I was in a wow. stream, and that was said. Um, you can find him at front frontlinemcc.home.blog. Make sure to bookmark Dan. <laughs> oh, here we are for another week. We are we're back, man. Oh man, now that I now, <laughs> now I don't like now that that's said, like I feel like uh, like it's gonna be hard to just act natural now because like I'm just like. Like my head's spinning. I'm just thinking about the fantastic chemistry, chemistry, and I don't want to ruin anything. I know, I know. That's that's the thing. It's, like, a, lot, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I mean, I heard like all the lovely compliments we get about this podcast running smoothly, and we talked about this on our incursion stream that you know it was um it's a case. Well, we actually kind of we do a lot of winging, really, and people are like yes, so smooth, it's so smooth. You wait, you know, you're doing so, and it's like, well, yeah, that's the chemistry because we're able to kind of link stuff in. But the thing is, yeah, no, it's been good. Yeah, we we did incursions on the second channel. Um, if you have, if you so much it, fun, that was a really good. We had a really good time with that. Um, incursions yeah. are out on Wednesday, and it's you, you're gonna love it. You're gonna absolutely love it. Um, I was repping King Group with the meme champions, having a great time with that. Uh, we're probably gonna try and get back in there at some point, so we'll let you know uh, through our respective um, sites and social medias when we're live. But we have got a very special guest today. And first of all, um, I have, and talking about good chemistry and a good working relationship, um, Dan has said to me, I've got to be on my best behavior if we want to bag some other Kabam guests, you know, like Kabam Mike, Kabam Thel, Kabam Pork Chop, Kabam Spice, and Kabam just blocked up the gents' toilets and now needs to call maintenance before other co workers find out. <laughs> uh, and whether or not that's a real one, maybe, who knows. So, without further ado, I'm now going to introduce our guest. <clears throat> In the office, he is he has the nickname of Tableau. He is in the G he is the GDP of MCOC, the real MVP of the economy, obviously Marvel Contest of Champions, and he has the kind of accent that makes you fall in love with him the second he opens his mouth. It's Kabam Frenchy! Bonjour, bienvenue. Bonjour tout le monde. Hi everyone. Thank you for having me, Rich. See, so this is this is the professional introduction. And I'm so afraid. That's awesome. <laughs> and you are our first ever Kabam um, named guest or Kabam guest. Oh, I'm so flattered. I know. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm really surprised that we were allowed to bag somebody from Kabam. So this is great. This is a great start. This podcast this is, is now, awesome. it's now, it's now making some gains. It's oh, legit, man. Yeah. Okay. I well, think. Thank you for legitimizing us, Kabam Frenchie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you we appreciate a, it. You have a beautiful French accent. Are Not you a French Canadian or are you from France? Are you, are you from Quebec? What's the deal? I'm a French French. Oh. I come from France. Yeah. Fantastic. I actually moved to Montreal seven years ago so to, to study game design. Um, because, you know, Quebec's the easiest mm. place to start for a Frenchman, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I know that's, but, that's, that's good. That works perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Now that I'm more into it, like, I came in Vancouver, a more English place. So I actually started learning English like two to three years ago. Wow. Because that's the thing is that you kind of think, well, a lot of people would kind of learn English prior to them making so much of a big uh, jump to go to um, a country of similar, for, uh, very far away. So that's pretty impressive. And yeah. Fun fact, I actually applied to Kabam four years ago oh. and I actually couldn't understand them in the phone. Oh. I couldn't. Yeah, I didn't understand the English, so... It was a, it was bad at that time. So were you given a second chance then? Yeah. That well, that's good. I I'm I'm glad that happened. I'm glad we're having this conversation. Um, mm. and that's obviously the the question. Was it is it been now three years that you've been working at Kabam or is it been no, not at all. 
it's been a year and a half now. Year and a half. Wow. Yeah. That's, I mean, for for myself and Dan, we're. Uh, have you actually? Did you? Have you played the game before then? Like, um, bef- like before you joined in Kabam? Have you, did you start? Have you played MCC prior to then? So not really. I played um, just a little bit, so I'll be able to like. Um, analyze what there is in game yeah because at the game economy designer i need to know uh, a lot about games of course but i really started playing when i joined kabam mm. uh, and did prior to that did you have a favorite marvel character is it or has there been uh, one you kind of resonated with for whatever reason uh unfortunately i'm not playing him in game but my favorite is deadpool for sure oh nice are you able to play much of the game on a daily basis yeah like because that's the thing. I know a lot of a lot of kind of kabam um, people have said that you know they 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 will play like Alliance Quest or Alliance Wars, and there's like a into office Alliance Quest Alliance Wars going on. Um, how many hours do you had to clock in a day? Probably around one or two. Mm. Like I'm playing every day. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, playing around one or two hours. Uh, I actually did a new account three months ago now. Oh yeah. Because you know I need to rerun the beginning of the game. The all the onboarding and stuff so i can uh see what changed yeah because there's a lot and, of game uh, yeah. economy changes right at the beginning you've you've put in a few things you've added some stuff i know um Mike's announced some stuff that really benefits a lot of new players to the game as obviously the old the old meta of the game um isn't really there when you start off with act one act two um so that's that's good as well because you've introduced those lower rank up gems for new players haven't you yeah and there's more stuff coming on, so I'm probably going to have to start a new account uh, end of this year. Oh, wow. Mm. That's I mean, that's a problem in some ways if you're then... Uh, no, it's a good thing and a bad thing to be focused quite so much of like going back to the new player experience because that's been something I think that you guys are working a lot more on is... It's from the start point, getting players to, to, to stay in that early point of when you join the game. So I think that's that's a good point. But then it's, it's it's not so good to get yourself to end end game. Um, where where are you at the end game content? Would you say? So right now on my new account, I'm just trying to get Cavalier. Yeah. So I've reached uncollected in around a month time because nice. I'm playing only one or two hours a day. Yeah. But on my previous account, I cleared all the three at that time. Mm-hmm. That was six point two, I believe. Mm-hmm. So I was grinding variant and alliance wars and stuff. Nice. Nice. Um, okay, so apart from Marvel Contest of Champions, what other games uh, do you play or what do you have time for? Because that's the other thing, I suppose. If you're working an eight-hour-plus day and then you're putting an hour to two hours on MCC, that's you know that's a good chunk of your day already gone. So do you have any time yeah. for any of those? Uh, it's a bit hard. Uh, it's mostly during the weekend. But yeah, mm-hmm. I play a lot of different games on a different platform. Oh, yeah. So like right now with the confinement, I'm a bit on Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. It's like my girlfriend pushed me to buy it, so we bought it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise, no, I don't know. I like games like The Binding of Isaac, uh, Slade Aspire, Bull Star, you know, Pokemon, Super Smash Brothers, Rocket League, Detroit, Doofy's Touch. You no, know, a bite of everything. Nice. I think it's always nice to have a, a, a broad spectrum of games to, games to play. Right, burning question. Uh, have you played Marvel Realm of Champions yet? And if so, what do you think and what's your house? So I have played. We're doing oh. company playtest. God damn I'm it! So, so jealous. <laughs> damn so, it! So excited for this game, Frenchie. <laughs> you guys, so excited. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of fun, mm. but I can't actually say anything about it. I know. I know. But if you want to know, I'm <laughs> Spider Guild all the way. Spider Guild. See, the thing Ooh. is, myself and Dan are at war at the moment because um, I'm Temple of Ashanti and Dan is uh, Pyramid X. And obviously, the event at the moment is faction versus faction. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting to find out the data of like uh, how many went one way and how many went the other. Um, I-, I guess that's something you wouldn't you wouldn't release that kind of information, would you? I'm not sure. Mm. So I have this information internally. So yeah. I made to be sure the rewards were balanced. I yeah. made a poll among the the employees, right? And that were pretty mm-hmm. balanced. So I'm wondering how we go with the players for sure. Yeah. Um, 
I, my reasoning for going shards was I need to awaken some Aegons or have as many chances as possible to awaken Aegon and as well as a couple of uh, key champions. Um, just kind of like throwing this question around uh, the two of you, uh, I'll first of all go with uh, Frenchie. What side did you pick and why? So I picked shards right yeah. now because I need more five stars. Yeah. Uh, but depending on which champion I'm going to pull, I'm probably going to go to with Catalyst on the second time. Yeah, that's, I think I'm going to stick. Uh, Dan, what did you go for, and are you going to change? Uh, Pyramid X all the way. Glory mm. uh, to our Baron Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to be sticking for the last couple of weeks? Double cross my house. Ah, oh, right, okay. I oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, right, we've got all the getting to know you, lovely stuff about yourself. Um, before we get into the seriousness, uh, and it's probably probably kind of good to find find out a bit more about um, what what you do. Obviously, you've got game economy, you've said at times uh, game game developer. Specifically, what do you do for the game that we as players would identify with? Oh, okay. So, as a game economy designer, we're actually touching about like about everything in game, right? So we make sure you progress through the game at a decent speed, yeah. that uh, you're enjoying your experience and you have always goals and something to do in game, mm -hmm. that you want to come back to the game and that all your purchases are meaningful. Yeah. So basically every time you see a number in game yeah. may come from us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when we're doing rewards, it comes from us. When there's... Uh, in-app purchases, so it does not come from us, but mm -hmm. we're actually consulting with the team or doing that. Um, any new piece of content, uh, we are not like uh, owner of all the features, mm -hmm. but we are guiding people through the difficulty it should be uh, based on the reward we, we want to give and everything like that. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of everything, basically. Gotcha. That's, that's good. That gives enough information um for for us to go and i suppose like players to really understand obviously there's a there's, there's some serious questions which are gonna gonna go, gonna go on to in a minute uh i think that address some some things where players maybe kind of feel like oh you know what's uh, the volume of this being added to this quest and those kind of things so i'm now going to throw it over to my glamorous co-host to ask you the first question Yes, and I, I actually think that was a, a perfect lead-in uh, to our first question, um, because the first question is, what is the team's overall uh, guiding philosophy when it comes to the game economy? Now, you just had this bit, and I think it's important you're talking about well, every you know everything has to have meaning the purchases have to have meaning and the rewards have to have meaning but when we get down to like the different items like shards fragments and catalysts um you know some of them have an rng element to them some of them don't so like what what's the philosophy when it comes down to act like the actual in-game currencies yeah uh so when we're looking at the game economy of mcoc we're not looking it at a specific items. We're probably going to look it at the whole, right? Um, so we're trying to give you what you need uh, with a specific quantity based on your story title and your skill. Uh, I say skill because there's some content like Abyss mm. uh, or even Labyrinth, right? When Labyrinth came out, uh, not everyone could do it. So it had like good reward for that time. But it didn't depend on your story title at that time. Uh, so that's why like, we're using more and more the story title to split rewards between players. So we've seen it with the calendar, for instance, or uh, with the uh, 4th of July, those kind of things, right? Yeah. Because we, we don't want to give five-star shards to a beginner players. Uh, either he won't have used to it, or the game's going to be too easy for him, and he's probably going to leave the game because it's not challenged anymore. Although, I must point out, sorry to kind of like interrupt, um, yeah. my uh, fiance um, came back to the game after being level 20. Uh, she had uh, HQ Sean's uh, very kindly given Grand Master Crystal and picked up a five star Warlock, which obviously prepare is, has propelled her a, a lot quick, a lot more kind of easily through, uh, through a lot of content. So th there's the RNG factor to those things as well, isn't there? Like in that so way. right now... Right now, yeah, but mm. we're trying to remove it a little bit. So yeah. I don't know if you've seen the Act 1 new rewards. Yeah. I removed all the PHCs from it. Oh. Uh, we don't want players to have to sh a shot at the 4-star 
But the counterpart is we give them more catalyst and gold to rank their champions up. Right, okay. So even though you're not going to be able to have a four star, your progression is going to be uh, much faster because you're going to have m way more resources to rank up your champions. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. Sorry, Dan. I was gonna. I was gonna ask. Uh, was that a reaction to you guys seeing in the data that people were skipping over certain star levels at the at the beginning of the game? Not only, but yeah, it was part of that. Mm. Okay. Like players almost don't even rank up their two stars anymore, and we can yeah. say that even the three stars have decreased by a lot. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I think as well. Uh, Brian Grant recently with the. Um, uh, he did a McFabio. That's it, yeah, McFabio. That that did show um, a, f a fantastic observation of uh, of a new player experience. Uh, obviously, uh, it's it's a case when someone is experienced and is going to redo that. They know what they're doing when they come to it. It's not a case of going, oh, Joe Bloggs off the streets. Here's the game. See what you can do in a week, because obviously they they wouldn't have that level of understanding, knowledge, experience, and skill that that Brian has for it. But it was a, an amazing eye opener. Um, did you follow that one as well? Yeah, I yeah. I've watched like perhaps thirty to forty hours of his streams. Whoa! Fantastic. <laughs> I would I would get yeah. You watched it pretty intently then. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good though. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess that you know. It's it's sort of like this real live testing of all this uh, all the stuff you're putting into the game, right? Yeah, because like, when we're doing content like this, obviously it's targeted uh, for the average players, right? The new players coming to the game doesn't know anything about the game, mm. but players like right. Brian Grant, his experience is completely different. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move us on to our second question. So MCC has a wide variety of in-game currencies and plays at different progression levels. How do you go about zoning the players so resources levels are appropriate at each point? I know we just touched on things like two-star rank-up gems and early progression. How do you come up with uh, putting the right things in the right quests when it comes to rewards? Yeah, so as we said earlier, like we're using the player title more and more now. And... Mm. We're currently reworking the player progression, like the the speed of it, uh, what they should rank up, and while doing that, we're creating something called key beats. Those key beats are a certain point in time and in the progression where player should have a basic roster. Hmm. Um, we know that the average prestige to clear Act One it's around 500, so we're gonna give players uh, the resources to build up their roster up to those 500 prestige. Hmm. Uh, that's how we determine which, which kind of resources we put in that type of content. Yeah. And like for exploration, for instance, if you want to explore Act 1, uh, they're going to give you more prestige, so it's going to help you for Act 2. The same goes for one-shot difficulties, uh, the meta event quests, um, meaning like if you go into this content, uh, depending based on your title, you should be able to clear everything. Mm. Uh, and it's going to help you progress through the story mode uh, a little bit faster because I have a little bit more resources to have more power. Mm -hmm. Interesting, so, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't have guessed that prestige uh, we never think of like beginning players and their prestige so that's interesting that you guys do. Yeah, yeah we never used prestige actually in the player facing. Uh, you never see that before because it was a hidden component for us to track what player did at what level. Hmm. Well, and, and to follow up on that um you know how do you guys you talked about this a little bit uh earlier and you kind of kick the rewards around the office but when it comes to things like it's like okay we're gonna give them gold we're gonna give them five star shards well how does how does the volume of those rewards get determined once they get attached to a certain event or a certain piece of content so uh, for the i tier rewards we have a monthly budget that we're trying to stick to, right? <laughs> really? That's, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's what we have. We're increasing it over time, as you could see, like the T5Bs, for instance, they have increased quite a bit yeah. Uh, yeah. since the last yep. few months. Um, and that's what we're using. But like, for, you see some events where we only give Catalyst or Shards. So obviously mm. during those months, we can stick to the budget, but we're trying to do like an average uh, across like few months' time. Um, and this budget, how do we define it? It's the speed of which we want you to progress through the game. Uh, there's multiple factors to um, define that speed. The first one is if you're in high 
late game content, like for the T5CCs, for instance, mm. uh, we know we're not going to release the rank four um, before quite a long time. So mm. we can't give you 10 T5CC right now, or you're going to sit on your rank four, rank three roster for a long time, and you have, you're going to have nothing to do until then, right? That's kind of how we're defining our budget. For the T5B, is the same. We've increased quite a bit because now it should be easier to get, mm. uh, and we want everyone to participate in AW having their rank five and stuff like that. Well, I suppose the same thing between Act Act 5 and Act 6. You, you did a similar thing before i mean obviously it's but maybe a bit before your time um but act five and act six from the point of going from a situation with that to then going with with that it didn't see anybody you know having uh like a huge increase in things like six star champions i think we were still pretty much kind of um astounded at that point with people being able to do uh rank two six stars let alone rank three so i guess there is going to be a waiting game for the next uh piece of content uh when it comes to that also i love i love the fact that you said about a budget i think that's that's a good tool to kind of balance things and and have certain checks i mean obviously you know we'd 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 love to say that we get like loads of shards give me them shards (laughs) give me that rank up resources and materials um but that's really cool and that that kind of leads us leads me into like the, the next question which um because we've touched on how you benchmark that based on, you know, Kabam setting or you guys coming together and saying, like, okay, well, uh, this month we're going to give out X amount of shards and X amount of rank ups. Um, is this all done by analytical data or do you just say, right, well, the budget is going to be this this month and we're going to change it up or change it down? Um, is it very much the same? Yeah, so... The first thing we're trying to stick to is our uh, planning, right? Mm. Um, that's the first thing we're using. But uh, everything we do, it's monitored by data. Yeah. We're checking yeah. data every day on everything we're doing, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we have a huge data team who's gathering the info, shares it to us, and we analyze it. And, like, if we're releasing something that goes well, um, of course, it's going to continue in that sense. Mm. But if it doesn't, we're just going to cut it. Yeah. Um, everything we're doing, we're, we, we have a purpose, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's why we're analyzing everything. We want it to make um, impact. Uh, it can be related to anything, to player retention, engagement, uh, your progression, the sessioning, the social engagement, uh, if you change your behavior, depending on the mode you're going to, um, if you rank up certain champions and like other or no one rank them up, um, all those kind of stuff, basically. That's fascinating. Uh, so, in a in a way that you would go, okay. So this month we've seen more activity in arena, or we've seen more activity in uh, this type of quest, or in this type of quest. That then you kind of you uh, as a ga- as a developer then switch between going, okay, well they resonated towards this. Let's do more of this type of stuff or this next month. Is that the way that I'm understanding this? Yeah, we can do it like that. Like for some meta events, we've seen that specific meta events gathered a lot of people, uh, like everyone were completing it. So we say, okay, perhaps we're going to do it again uh, next time, like in six months time or a year Mm -hmm. time. Uh, But sometimes there's data that are way flawed. And that's why we're checking all the content you guys are putting out there, YouTube, Reddit, uh, the forum. We're actually reading and listening to everything. So... Every video that is posted on YouTube, even though you only have 10 subscribers or 100,000, we're listening to it. Um, because yeah. we can make a content that it's quite boring, mm. but because the rewards are great, everyone's going to do it. But that doesn't mean you actually liked it, right? So we need your feedback. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. I can't right, believe it. Right, exactly. I mean, I, f- I find the weird, weird the case of like anybody watching my videos. I come across such, such like an asshole sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And yeah, you know that you know. It's like, oh, we gotta watch Rich's video. What what's he calling us out on today? <laughs> Great Marvel Contest of Champions news. Have I been? Have I been? Um, yeah. Sa- have, have I kind of picked up what? on Mike being sassing people? Uh, oh yeah, that came around. We, all right. <laughs> we talked about it. Oh but no. You guys we... play like uh, you guys should do like Rich the Man Bingo or like a drinking game. Like every time he says stuffiness, 
everyone in the office drinks. Is that is that how it works? Uh, we don't do that, but we should. We don't drink at at, at the studio, but uh, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't say that. Like, we, we should say that French, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but well, don't worry. Actually, even I... though, oh sorry. Even I just want to say one no, thing. Yeah, even though your, your feedback yeah. is critical and negative, uh, mm. we need to hear it. So continue to do that, please. <laughs> I mean, oh is, no! I think I think Rich can do that. I think he'll be he'll be all right. Well, I, I just wanted to to follow up because you you know talking about the data and uh, sort of monitoring their rewards, but also where people spend their game time and do uh, you know what content that leads them to. Uh, you guys are about to release things, which hey, is so Dan Dan. Do you, yep. you might, uh, we've got a little bit of kind of like fuzziness your side. Okay. Um. It seems let so me. Uh, Calm. Hold on, let me exit and I'll restart. Okay, Ta. This means editing for me. <laughs> I don't mind it. I don't mind as long as it kind of comes out as a good piece. I'm happy about yeah. this. But it's still more work. Yeah, it's it's all right. I've got a nice. Um, I'm having a nice spatchcock with some uh, garlic and herb. Um, some nice, <laughs> nice vegetables. Uh, so and red. I've got some red wine as well. Not from, oh, that's not, nice. Not from France, unfortunately. Fine, there's some great red wine others that France. The yeah. France is the best one, but... You know. it, it is. Um, what have I got? Uh, usually, uh, I think I got an Argentinian wine. Um, um, I, I think it was... I was. I usually don't I take a lot, a lot of time to kind of like study what I, what I want to grab drink-wise, but it was a case of like, with all the social distancing stuff, it was a case of, we've got to go, come on, quickly, move, move, move. <laughs> yeah, I get it. And I'm not coming out of my home anymore except for to walk the dog. Uh, what's uh, supermarkets like that? I mean, for here we've got like you, you have to you, you two meter gap and you have to walk. Um, mm. You kind of like behind people shuffling trolleys, and it takes about thirty to minutes to an hour to get through supermarkets. What's it like in Vancouver? I'm only going to a small supermarket, so I think that's fine. Like usually in fifteen minutes, I'm done with everything. So mm. okay, that's good. That's good. Dan, you're back? I am back. Okay, cool. Am I right. coming through clear? Yeah, you're coming in perfect. Okay, I'll lead you. Cool. Uh, I'll, we'll leave uh, it with you to lead off. French, you were just talking about how you monitor sort of the rewards versus the social buzz and where people are spending their time in game. Uh, that's an interesting question right now because you're about to introduce a new game mode called Incursions. So I imagine that's something you're going to be looking at very closely and you probably have benchmarks as to what is going to be like a healthy acquisition rate for incursions, but also to see like, does incursions pull people away from other content? Is that, is that going to be a big part of your week? Uh, it will, it will. Uh, there's something specific with the incursions that it doesn't use energy, right? Mm -hmm. And energy is a critical part of the game where you spend your time in. Um, so in that sense, I think the most important stuff we're going to look into is uh, how many players are actually playing the game? Um, which room do they reach? Mm -hmm. Which zone? And uh, yeah, of course, they play time in it. Like, we don't want incursions are really fun. Yeah. We don't want players to only play incursions because you're not going to get your catalyst and everything. Uh, but it's going to greatly help the social aspect of the game. And uh, we're going to want to give you more stuff uh, to play during the confinement. So props to the team to releasing this content way before it was supposed to be released. Uh, but mm. yeah, I'm gonna look at it like during my whole week. Yeah, because it was um, normal. It was gonna be tipped down to the 20th of April. Uh, Marvel.com made a boo boo by saying it was gonna be released on the 8th of April. Um, and obviously, a lot of us were gonna come out to um, to to try out incursions at the studio. So it, it's. It's good, uh, as I said, that you know players get it earlier whilst in confinement. A lot of my subscribers and as well um, people that follow and subscribe to Dan are interested to obviously play um, alongside him as well. So this is comes at the right time. Yeah, people are definitely excited. Awesome. I so, watched all the yeah. streams. That's awesome to see you guys playing the incursions already. Yeah, thanks Been for coming by to that, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah. Thank you for so much for uh, for coming by and hanging in the chat. Uh, we appreciate it. And I'm gonna uh, a little. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit, uh, and this is more just about like you and your job. Like, I think with all of our jobs, we 
we go to work and we say, all right, this is what I get to do to, um, you know, succeed at my job. And there's a, a feedback loop. Like I would imagine the champion designers around the Kabam offices are always very excited when their new champion gets released and they know they're going to get a lot of feedback in terms of like the forums and YouTube videos and crystal sales and arena scores. But how does someone that get like, how does a game economist go home and say, you know what, we, we smashed the game economy today. Like what, what, how do you, you know, for lack of a better term, like how do you know you're doing a good job? So part of, I believe that part of my job is to make you guys happy. And you're actually giving us a lot of feedback through social media too, not only the champion designers, but every okay. piece of content we put out there, we're actually giving out a lot of feedback. Uh, but in addition to that, it really depends on what feature we're working on at the time. But for all the features, we have some goals. And we're using mostly the data analytics to see if the goals have been met. Uh, for instance, we released the sigil like eight months ago now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the main goal, the main focus of this feature was to engage lower level players uh, into an exciting low price point feature that lasted 30 days. So we could improve this 30-day re retention, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. we didn't want late game players to be left out. So that's why we put some more stuff in there for you. Uh, so you be still be interested in this feature and it doesn't feel like, OK, uh, we're being left out. So we actually saw a lot more players sticking around if they got the sigil that if they didn't. So we know that's valuable for the players. Uh, mm -hmm. If it didn't, we probably would have say, okay, let's cancel it or let's rework it in a way that it would improve stuff. So mm -hmm. those that are actually, it's a good indication of if our features have reached our goals or not. Just kind of like uh, getting involved with uh, the sigil side of things. Obviously, you, you won't be able to kind of uh, confirm or deny anything. Uh, but um, are you going to be do anything more with the sigil obviously i know you've recently done something to add things like legendary crystal and a few other things there's obviously some players are a bit kind of unsure about that i'm still a little bit unsure and i think i'll only be buying legendary ones for legendary crystals for, for crystal opening extras and stuff uh, but do you plan to do anything more with the sigil in the next six months or maybe year i do okay cool i, I do it's planned we just don't have any release date yet Oh, okay, right. That's, that's. I was going to stop you and think, oh, you don't need to say too much more. But um, thank you. Obviously, that's 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 brilliant to know that you know it's going to be looked into again because obviously this is a, a product a lot of players are are passionate about. And as you even said, so that's that's excellent to to know. Right. Uh, next question. Um, late in two thousand nineteen, there was a lot of talk in the community about tier two alpha shortage. While there was an acknowledgement of an issue, we did see an increase in Tier 2 Alpha through a logging calendar's side quests and Alliance quest rewards. Was this the result of an investigation prompted by player feedback? I'd like to say yes, but unfortunately, no. Uh, we had a plan to increase the T2A at some point in time, but mm -hmm. we needed a... We needed a specific tech to do it so yeah. like being able to leverage the the story title right we were actively waiting for it to increase the t2a we saw your uh all the co the comments that said we need more t2a's mm. but we can't re really change uh anything in the game uh, in less than one or two months because we have processes mm. and also we thought that our plan was really solid yeah. So we wanted to wait for it. Uh, I think it paid off. Uh, we're sorry you had to wait a little bit to get those situations. Mm. But I think we have a more robust system now that we have everything that we needed to increase those situations. Right? And is this something where, uh, and, and Dan's going to lead us in a minute to, a, to another question, which is going to be, obviously, it's all relevant to this because you've, you've, you've talked about this in the past, like the roadmap and, and, and these kind of these plans. Um, are you able to at times when these kind of uh, the wave of maybe criticism comes in, say players' problems, are you able to quickly deviate from the roadmap and the plan to go, right, well, we were, we were planning to do this six months down the line, but we're going to have to bring this forward as a change in two months' time or one month time? So if it's that far, yes, we are. Right. Definitely. If it's shorter, we can't. 
So mm. I've seen comment on this uh, month meta, uh, meta event where you know the scuffle he was around the rewards. Yeah. Uh, this is not something that we change. It's actually it was a miscommunications. Uh, we the thing that you have in game right now were the thing that was planned. We can change rewards in two days time. So Freshie, you were talking a little bit about how the team can or can't adjust to player feedback when it comes to rewards. Uh, the one place you did uh, make uh, a pretty big adjustment in, in a short amount of time was the Axix rewards. So I'm just wondering a little bit about how that whole process worked. Uh, did you guys initially feel that, that uh, you know, the, the original announcement of the rewards was in line with the, the current game economy? And uh, you know, how, how did that feedback you were getting from the players get instituted into the, the new rewards that actually went live with uh, the completion of Act 6? Yeah. So when we released Act 6 rewards, um, those rewards were planned months in advance. Okay. They were in our roadmap and everything. And something that we usually don't want to do it's react to the player feedback too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you may do more harm than good. Right. But in that case, uh, we've seen the player feedback. And I think the overall difficulty of Act 6 and everything we wanted to do with it uh, made sense for us. That's why we wanted to rework it. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the juice worth was the squeeze. And the rewards, the rewards match the difficulty and the effort put into it, into your roster, into the time, uh, and into the skill you needed to even clear the, the last boss, right? Mm -hmm. um, and something that's important for us with the Axis rewards is like we want them to be comparable and living al alongside everything else in the game. So Act 5, AVA Seasons, the Variant Quest, the, and especially the Abyss of Legends, um, We've released the beast uh, one month before, I believe. Mm. So when players see all those T5CCs, and then they went into Act 6, and they've seen uh, less T5CCs, they were disappointing. Um, but at the same time, not, not everyone's going to do a beast of Legends, right? That's have true. you done it? Right. No, I don't, I don't have the roster for it. I, I, have, uh, I have none of the horsemen. <laughs> So it's a little out of my league right now, and I think Rich is still waiting on that Aegon dupe. Uh, yeah, five star and six star. Not, yeah. not that I'm bitter. I am very bitter. <laughs> no. Hey, at least you got one. I still need to get two of them. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah, no, you're halfway there at least. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously Abyss was uh, really, you know, shook the contest when that was released. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when we created Abyss... Um, Okay, I won't try to talk about stuff that I can't, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to say we didn't plan Doom ahead of time. Uh, right, wow. yeah, you weren't... And I think, I want to say it's Kabam John has talked about this when he was testing Abyss out. Dr. Doom wasn't in the game yet, so he was using Symbiote Supreme to test all those fights that we're all using Doom for. Yeah, exactly. So actually make a big difference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he make, Doom makes a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah. Anyway, those axes we were. I when we released it, uh, actually some players liked it. Like Brian Grant liked it. Um, we've seen a lot of people discussing it on Reddit and the forum posts. Like some people agreed, some people disagreed. And the thing that you just need to be aware of is like rewards planning. It's not a hard science, right? Mm -hmm. We have a plan, and we know what we want to do. But at the same time, we also want to make you happy. Because if you're not happy, you're not gonna play the game. And we're here, uh, so you can play a game you enjoy, right? Um, so that's why we decided to rework them a little bit. Gotcha. So basically, to summarize, like you, you guys had an idea when you conceptualized Act 6 where you wanted the rewards to end up, and then the actual fights and the content gets built, and Abyss came out, and where you ended up didn't totally match up with where those rewards were going to be so that's where the feedback came in and, and why the why the change yes exactly so we are actually playtesting the game so i'm playtesting play all the content i can before mm -hmm. it's released so right. i can assess it beauty and balance the rewards accordingly um but sometimes even among us uh people have different opinions because we have different skill level and we have different player we know how to play um so that may be scruffy at times 
Yeah. Gotcha. That's that's, gotcha. that's really I mean that's that's good. I mean it's kind of weird but I I I get I get it. I get it. Um Well, it's, I think it's like any other job, right, Rich? Like yeah. you make a plan and then and then life happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and then and then sometimes you have to uh you have to adjust. But I I can understand how it's tricky for Frenchie because the players always want more mm. right like the players are always going to say we want more so you guys have to determine when when we're when we're just begging for more and when there's like a legitimate grievance right yeah you know there's actually a principle in game design that's really important that uh we're basing everything off of like every game it's like there's this curve um where if you're not challenged enough you're gonna be bored so if we're right. gonna give you too much items, uh, too many items, different quantity, quantities, and you're going to be able to rank up all your champions. You're going to be bored, and you're going to drop the game. But at yeah. the same time, if we're not giving you enough resources, it's going to be too hard, and you're just going to leave the game because it's too hard and you're not progressing enough. So we need to walk that thin line uh, to make yeah. everyone happy. Yeah, and and speaking of that thin line, I think uh, gold is the resource that, that we always keep coming back to as a player base as the game progresses, uh, progresses just because uh, rank-ups are getting more and more expensive. So when it comes to gold, what, what's the plan there? What can you tell us about, about the roadmap for gold going forward? Uh, so we definitely wanted to increase the gold amount in 2020, mm -hmm. but we don't want to increase, to increase it everywhere. Or at least farmable everywhere. Um, you've seen Act One. Global level players have access to a lot more gold now in story, um, and we're gonna continue doing that for the later hack, hopefully. But it doesn't affect you, right? So that's why we released incursions. And mm -hmm. incursions, they have a lot more gold than dungeons. Um, yes. If you're committed to it, it's actually in the seven figures monthly. Wow. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty excited about the gold part <laughs> of incursions. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Where does that really come in? Because I know that's is that through the milestone side of things that you get the the, the gold. Obviously, I'm seeing like uh, 30k, 60k, uh, respectively, or, or I think it was 20, wh whatever it was. There was there was like good chunks, and even with um, myself and Dan's uh, two hour uh, run, I think I picked up about I think I want to say it was about close to about five hundred thousand gold. So is that in the milestones? So it comes a bit from everywhere. There's a lot in the milestones, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot in the top room rewards because you can do two different uh, uh, tiers. You mm -hmm. can So if you're a late game player, you can do tiers six and seven. Uh, you can actually double up on those rewards. And wow. every time you clear a zone, you have gold too. So it's a small amount, mm -hmm. but over time it adds up quite quickly. Uh, do you have the? De I mean, it's, I don't know if you if we would have this. Do you have the details of how much uh, five star shards, uh, dark artifacts that you're able to gather from doing a full six and seven? In I don't know really. What? How would you? How would you kind of like say? Um, because it resets every not week. It's every thirty days, isn't it? Well, it's there, yeah, there's thirty. It's thirty days for the the room rewards. Yeah, 30 yeah. days for the room rewards and 7 days for the milestones. The milestones. Um, yeah. Oh, is it is it 7 or 5? I thought it was 5. Yeah, you, yeah probably 5. Okay, all right. Yeah, you, right, right. Um, yeah, I have the amount. I know exactly how much 5-star you can get. Are you allowed to say, though? Well, I guess you can see it in game. So I yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, I mean, say, say, just, it's just for me, just say, saves time me kind of like counting it up myself. But you know, so it's six thousand six hundred and fifty-five star shards nice. per month. Per month, that's yes. pretty good. And and that's on top of you're going to be getting some some uh, of those incursions five star crystals anyway. So yeah. So yeah. you're gonna be able to have thirty-one thousand five hundred artifacts. What did you say? Um, well, they, dark, dark that's artifacts, more yeah. than a full crystal a month. Yeah, thirty-one yeah, thousand five hundred. Because wow. I think that's what put people off a little bit on dungeons is that it took so long to get uh, the the twenty-seven k for the five star, um, partially because of the the you know the amounts. That were in the milestones, and partially because you have to take two weeks off, 
where you couldn't play them. So it was a long time to get get to the reward. Mm -hmm. yep. This this is going to be good. I think for me, looking at these yeah. turtles now, I might be able to get um, two crystal uh, two crystals worth this month. But that's because I don't. I've not really done dungeons uh, for a while. So this is yeah. Uh, what's the gold situation with with that then? If you were to do you were to do this, it's seven figures. You said. Yeah, so it depends of your play time and the mm. room you reach and how often do you play. Like you could farm gold by playing over and over again, right? Be wow. Just because there's a few gold in the in the end of each zone. Um, but if you complete everything and that you have your five star shard and all your artifact, I'm expecting you to have uh, one and a half million gold. Oh yeah, that's wow, sounds nice. nice. And and just this is totally off topic with the game economy, but I think incursions is the best thing that you guys have done yet as far as content for live streaming uh i think it's going to be i think it's going to make for more exciting viewing yeah. and i think we already saw that with with some of the streams we were doing and some of the streams that, that the other content creators were doing it's just it creates a nice back and forth and i i don't know where i said it but incursions reminded me of um like when I used to go over to my friend's house as a kid and we'd throw on, you know, the Sega Genesis and, you know, you'd, you'd talk about life and you talk about the game and it'd be cooperative and you're just kind of hanging out playing video games. Like that was the first time I ever had that feeling playing MCOC. And it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, if the mode is successful, we may add, add some of buffs in the future or have a rotation or something like that to make it even more interesting. Has, that would be great. Has anybody said this would be a good opportunity for something for like a New York Comic Con or a Comic Con based tournament? So I've seen it in the in the comments on your videos. I guess mm. uh, I do believe that would be awesome, but I'm not sure the format would be good enough. Like it's quite long to go through mm. a full run, so yeah. I don't know about that part. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, there there have to be some tweaking because you don't want it to go like an hour and a half. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but you know, it could be cool if you you know. If you dumped a few people, like a you know three or four teams in like room ten, <laughs> and started there, right? And <laughs> like, okay, guys, see how you're, uh, see how you're doing here with this difficulty level, right? So, yeah, that'd be awesome. Right, I would watch that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think, I think that would be fun. Yeah, got to lead into a serious question now. Um, tier four, tier five class catalyst is currently the chase resource in the game. But it doesn't seem to be generating the same level of excitement over a wider portion of the player base that Tier 5 Basic did because of the inability to use a resource on a worthy 6-star chap. Do you agree with that perception? And if yes, what is the plan to address that issue? Okay, so I'm going to make debate here because okay. I both agree and disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, let me explain you why. First, I agree that players are feeling that way because I see it everywhere. But at the same time, I disagree that the feeling is over the wider portion of the player base. Um, the two FCCs right now, they are really hard to get. It's only in Act 6 and um, Abyss and AVA. But if you get them, we expect you to have already a pretty good 6-star roster. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a full T5CC, I mean. If you're not excited about those T5CCs, that may indicate that you don't have the need for it yet. So maybe you're not in that type of content yet, or um, you still have some stuff to do before having that six star roster. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't expect everyone to have a six star rank three already, right? This is the beginning of the rank three. So mm -hmm. we, we're we expecting a few months to go by before everyone start having rank three. Yeah. Um, because it takes a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And I would add that most of the T5 CCs have been consumed by rank up yet already. Like all the to all the T5 CCs that have been earned in game, most of them have been used. Yeah. Um, so that means that players who actually have those T5 CCs, they have the right champion to use it on. Hmm. But because this resource is so rare, my feeling is like players are waiting one of the top 10 champions in the tier list to use it on. That can make sense, but in my opinion, there are so many champions worthy of the T5 CCs. It's like, I would love a Nebula or a Venom to be ranked 3, right? Hmm. Uh, but Everyone wants Doom, Sunspot, Ghost, Corvus, or stuff like that. Oh, well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite offended you didn't mention King Groot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would rank up my King Groot yet, but, you know. Oh, personal. see, do you have him? <laughs> uh, I don't, actually. Yeah, I, I got but I have my Venom. 
Well, I've got my six star awakened, and I must admit he is quite dapper and quite handy when it comes to incursions. As yeah, anybody that watched I think the... he's going to be a, a sneaky incursions champion. Mm. So, yeah, maybe. You know, in the Axis, we have a selector. It's only a 25% of CCs, but that's still a selector. It's because we are well aware of this issue that players may not have a full T5 CCs and they maybe only have one or two champions they want to use it on. So it was to give you more agency. So I understand that it's only a T5, 25% of players wanted a full one, mm -hmm. but we expect with all the T5 CCs cat catalyst, there is in Act 6 that uh, this 25% is going to top off the one you need. And also the six star Nexus crystals that we added. Yeah, no, that was that uh, that six star Nexus crystal. That definitely uh, that definitely got a pop from the player base when that was that was announced. I don't think anyone was expecting to see that no, every, uh, in those rewards. Then everybody changed their mind when they saw those people put um, images on Twitter of uh, those terrible three options. I'm just trying to remember. I think somebody had had like um, a hood. Uh, it's something like an Iron Fist and another type of champion. Which it was are, Moon Knight. That was it. it was in the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, it's it it happens, right? It happens. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's just that's just part of the uh, the risk reward of the game. Um, so moving on, uh, I want to say you know I think we've noticed some some big improvements in rewards in early 2020 particularly the the side events for the last couple of months the um the mole man expeditions which had great rewards and um the rewards for the factions event seem to be quite good with very little effort to be honest um um you know are we seeing these are these resources increasing based on the content that is yet to come or is this more about shifting players to be able to complete what's already in the game right now um so we're definitely not planning you on pushing you forward for the content yet to come uh this is the job of the story mode mm -hmm. uh, gotcha. but we have multiple factors at play here the first one is the ceiling we're raising the ceiling every year right we're at the yeah. six star rank three right now so a new player who comes into the game we don't want don't want him to take four years before reaching that end game. That would be crazy. Right. Um, so that's why we're speeding up players over time. We want to keep a decent time before the new player to reach the end game. Mm. Um, and the second one is that moving forward, we want to adapt the rewards to the content. So for a meta event quest, for instance, if it's harder or longer than an average one, uh, you're going to have better rewards. But if it's shorter or easier, the reward will be more on the lower side. Um, so I want you guys except the mid, expect the meta event to have different rewards in the future. But for this month in particular, it's because this is a new type, new format of event, and that you have choices. Uh, we wanted to test it out, and that's why we gave out a uh, like basic resource for a small amount of effort. Mm -hmm. Well, you've done something similar in the past, but not to make it as um, easier, because we back in 2016 we had the... Um, uh, the Civil War event where you got to choose different factions and, and, and kind of have that option. But obviously this is a lot... It's, it's, it's very different in certain respects, but obviously similar with this kind of faction choosing. Uh, I, I do like the fact that it's it's very much a case with the quarantine. It works quite well. A lot of people are doing a lot of permanent content or a lot of story-based progression um, during this. So it, it comes about the, the the best time for players as well. Also, uh, uh, sidewinding a little bit, what was the... Um, uh, and you'll feel free to answer this or kind of like say, no, Richard, we can't. Um, the uh, energy calendar, um, when did, did that come about? Or did you just kind of think, look, you know, we've got to do something for players? Yeah, that was it. Like, we... We know a lot of players have more time in their hands, and we just wanted to do something about it if they still wanted to play in COC. So we added this calendar. Uh, we're thinking of doing something else, but we're just thinking about it yet. We have no idea. Um, it's like, as I said before, 
everything we have in game, it's planned months in advance. And I've also seen some content about offers or stuff that said we're taking advantages of you because of the coronavirus. That's not true. Uh, that's stuff that were planned well in advance. And mm. there's some yet to come. We can't just remove them. So they're going to come expected. Uh, there's nothing to do with the confinement. But everything else we put in game for you, uh, yes. So the energy content, the energy calendar, and something yeah. perhaps something else we don't know yet well that's that's good that you've addressed that because i know i did see a few um uh, posts on twitter and, and a few kind of responses here and there from from people kind of pointing out that um so that's 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 good to give us uh, an I- idea of it um okay uh you kind of alluded to some stuff um but are there any other exclusives obviously we've heard from uh dave's video what you plan in your roadmap and other contents but do you have any exclusives that weren't mentioned in that video that weren't already mentioned in the podcast that you could let us know i've dig deep <laughs> to find you mm-hmm. we appreciate it there's, there's some stuff coming up that i'm really excited about 2020 is a very exciting year. Mm. um unfortunately because some dates um like we're, we're, we're creating some content and we have a specific release date for it. But because we may have some issues, uh, we may delay it. Mm. And that's part of why we're not uh, releasing everything out there because we don't want you to be disappointing if we say, okay, we're going to release this mode in March, but it's coming up in December. Yeah. Right? Um, I suppose obviously you're not allowed, uh, I don't know if you would be allowed to mention, but has the obviously global, are you even saying that, you know, you're, you're working a bit from home and people are isolated. Has, has this situation affected a lot of the roadmap in general? Uh, not really. So mm. we had full capacity. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, you know, communications, uh, mm. is still a bit hard in yeah. those moments. Um, Otherwise, no, it hasn't delayed anything so far. That's good. Uh, something that I can say to you, though, is like we're working on the new difficulty for the for the monthly events, right? Oh. Yeah. So I have the date. And, and let's I, now. Yeah. When you say you you say new difficulty, we, cavalier difficulty, right? That's what we're talking about. Uh you'll see. <laughs> 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 Uh, I don't. I have the date, but I can't announce it. Okay. I just can't say that it's gonna come uh, right before summer, uh, r- right after summer. Excuse me. Right yeah. After summer. Okay. Yeah. We un- we understand you got to keep it hush hush now, because uh, in in everyone's mind at the moment, they've probably got this angry uh, angry Mike with just like his eyes just glaring at you, and and you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna divulge anything. We'll keep it quiet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that's brilliant. Thank you very much, obviously, for coming on by to the podcast and, and answering all these questions about game economy bits um, of, um, of information. Thank you for being our first ever Kabam guest. Well, thank you for having me. That was great. Thank yeah. you, Frenchie. Yeah, we really appreciate it. We hope you had a good time. And uh, as we wrap things up, we always talk about uh, what we're going to be doing uh, this week. So, uh, you know, what... What what are you any piece of content you're tackling this week or something that you're going to be keeping your eye on as far as the the game goes? Uh, I'm working on the story rewards right now, so I'm reworking them. But we don't know if they're gonna be out. We're just gonna check the Act One result first. Mm. If it went well, we're gonna release more. If it doesn't, we're gonna we're not gonna do anything. Oh, would would you um? Uh... Gotcha. I mean, I kind of feel we're, we're at the end here, but um, there, there is something with that. Would, would you, how far are you going to go up with that one? Uh, I know that if you change things when it comes to like Act 4, possibly in Act 5, it may kind of ruffle some jimmies of the end game player base. Do you plan to go up that far to, to actually kind of rework rewards? Act 4, yeah. Act mm. 5, I'm looking into it, but I'm not sure yet. But that's mm. something I wanted to say. It's like people, when we're updating this content, people are asking for compensation. Mm. I understand where they came from, but at the same time, you've passed this content. It's not your content anymore. Um, it's like, you know, um, inflation in the real world. Uh, it's not because you have, you're paid more now that you're asking for more compensation for the past 10 years. That's the same reasoning here. You passed this content already, so you've progressed further. So we expect you to play other content. So that's why we don't really want to give the difference to everyone. 
Um, but I get why that would make people angry. Mm. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Apart from that, let's end on a happy note That's and right. say and say thank you yeah, again. That, that, Dan, what are you up to this week? I up to this. Uh, I am. Uh, you know, g- going to continue to uh, get into early act uh, six point two. Um, you hopefully, write. I'm I'm working on a write up about incursions right now. Hopefully, have some tips out uh, before they go live. And um, you know, other than that, uh, just. Uh, Getting myself mentally in a good place for Alliance War Season 17. Oh, right. Well, I'm, uh, as of today, leaving my Alliance to go in Alliance Free for a little while to tackle some permanent content, which I'll be doing a video observation of uh, of my experience of having a month off. And as well, uh, the news, as, as always, and uh, incursions, as you alluded to, and changing my mastery setup to S-Word Masteries. I can't say the word on YouTube because they demonetize me. So S-Word Masteries are going to be a video topic. Um, in any case, you can find a podcast on the usual, on the YouTube, on Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud. Links are always in the descriptions and bios, and obviously for my guest we'll probably put Frenchie's Twitter handle in there and uh, yes and Dan's as well thanks everybody for for listening on in and see you all next week bye bye <laughs>